brethren, I declare unto you the gospel, which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1-4. through 4. This is the Gospel, the Gospel of the grace of God, the good news that the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God, came to this earth Took, him, took on himself the nature of a man. He was crucified and died for our sins, and he rose again on the third day. I want to ask you the most important question of your life. Your joy or sorrow for all eternity depends on your answer to this question. Are you saved? This has nothing to do with how good you are or if you go to a building called a church, but are you born again? In John chapter 3, verse 7, Jesus said, Ye must be born again. How can you be born again? First of all, you must realize that you are a sinner. Sin is anything in us that does not express or is contrary to the holy nature of our Creator, God. For instance, have you ever lied or cheated or stolen? These are all contrary to the character of God. The Bible makes it clear that all have sinned in Romans chapter 3 verse 23 when it says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Because you are a sinner, you are condemned to death. For the wages or the payment of sin is death. We read that in Romans chapter 6 verse 23. This includes eternal separation from God in hell. It is appointed unto men once to die, but after this the judgment. Hebrews chapter 9 verse 27. But God loved you so much he gave his only begotten son, Jesus, to bear your sin and die in your place. He hath made him to be sin for us, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 21. Jesus had to shed his blood and die. For the life of the flesh is in the blood. Leviticus chapter 17 verse 11. And without shedding of blood is no remission. Hebrews chapter 9 verse 22. God commendeth his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Romans chapter 5 verse 8. Although we cannot understand how, God said, My sins and your sins were laid upon Jesus, and He died in our place. He became our substitute. It is true, God cannot lie. God commandeth all men everywhere to repent. In Acts chapter 17, verse 30, to repent means to turn around, to confess and forsake one's sins. It's a change of mind and a change of heart and a change of attitude that abhors sins. It agrees with God that one is a sinner and also agrees that Jesus died for us on the cross. In Acts chapter 16, verses 30 and 31, the Philippian jailer asked Paul and Silas, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Simply believe on him as the one who bore your sin, died in your place, was buried, and whom God resurrected. His resurrection powerfully assures that the believer can claim everlasting life when Jesus is received as Savior. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. John chapter 1 verse 12. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Romans chapter 10 verse 13. Whosoever includes you shall be saved means not maybe nor can, but shall be saved. If you would like to learn more about sin, salvation, the Lord Jesus Christ, or anything else concerning the Christian faith, please visit www.acceptgbconverted.com.